Those of you who are here, you notice we had a power outage on the outside, but there's a power, power surge on the inside, amen? <laughs> on the outside, there's a big pole out there with this big gray box on there, and you heard it pop earlier today, it exploded, so they said, well, that's the end of that. We can't do nothing else for y'all this morning. But we said, don't worry about that, because on the inside, we got a power surge yeah. going on, Amen. I told y'all when we got involved in evangelism, we had a team going on, y'all. They, they're more than halfway through now. And I said, now get ready because there's going to be a spiritual attack on Skybridge. Every time God tries to do something, the enemy's always trying to take it away. But I served notice this morning, we ain't scared. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. God's got you. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. God's got you. Don't you be scared. God's got you. Somebody on the other side, tell them, neighbor, God's got you. Don't be afraid. And don't be dismayed. Amen. Somebody give God praise in the house. Yeah. God's got us. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad, yes I am, Jesus lifted me, I'm so glad, Jesus lifted me, singing glory, uh -huh. Jesus lifted me, oh, I'm so glad, Jesus lifted me. Lifted me, Satan had me bound, yes, but Jesus lifted me, Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me, singing glory, singing, singing, singing. One more time, Jesus. Oh, give me praise. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Came from heaven to earth to from the earth. From the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name. Oh, that Good. Now let's sing it like you really mean it this time. Lord, I lift. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love. Lord, I love to sing your praises. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad to live. I'm so glad. Lord, you came heaven to earth to from the earth to the cross my death to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky Lord, I 
from the cross, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name. Lord, I lift your name on high. One more time. Lord, I lift your name on high. Oh, give God praise. Father, we bless you and we thank you so much for the privilege, the opportunity to stand before your throne of grace one more time. Lord, we realize there's only one person in the house that we have to please, and that's you. So be with us now, Lord. Empower us. Send your Holy Spirit to fill us afresh. Protect us and keep us, oh God, from those who try to stop what you are doing. And may we be so careful to give your name the glory and praise you deserve. In the name of Jesus the Christ, our risen Lord, our Savior, and our King soon to come, we pray. Let the church say amen. amen. From 2 Kings chapter 6. Chapter 2 Kings chapter 6. Old Testament prophet by the name of Elisha. Man, do what you got to do. 2 Kings chapter 6 beginning at verse number eight. There's a word for us today, especially in light of what's going on today. Beginning at verse number eight, I'm reading from the ESV translation. It says this, once when the king of Syria was warring against Israel, he took counsel with his servants saying, at such and such a place shall my camp, shall be my camp. But the man of God sent word to the king of Israel, beware that you do not pass this place for the Syrians are going down there and the king of Israel went to the place about which the man of God told him thus he used to warn him he, that, that he used to warn him so that he saved himself more than once or twice drop down to verse number 15 if you will and when the servant of the man of God rose early in the morning and went out Behold, an army of horses and chariots was all around the city. And the servant said, Alas, my master, what shall we do? And he said, Do not be afraid, for those who are with us are more than they who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, O Lord, open his eyes that he may see. I want to talk with us this morning from the topic Invisible forces behind the scenes. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, there are some invisible forces behind the scenes as you take your seats. I told you the story some time ago about me heading to work late, rushing through traffic on Loop 1604 so I could be in the hospital by 6.30, 6.45 in the morning. And I was rushing on rainy roads with bald tires because I kept putting it off. And I'm driving the speed limit, but my tires weren't keeping up with the water movement on the pavement. And I started to hydroplane, which means my car started sliding across the freeway instead of driving down the freeway. I get to a point near Loop 1604 and Northwest Military Highway, and my car had turned and hit the bridge side so that I could see over. And I felt the car raise up, and I just grabbed the wheel, and I said, Jesus! And then the, the, the car bounced off the railing and turned, and I was facing traffic. So I just bowed my head and closed my eyes and gripped the steering wheel waiting for the collision. I can't tell you today why my car didn't go over the bridge. I can't explain to you why when I was just tracking with the traffic, 
that as I faced the traffic, I didn't get hit by oncoming cars. I believe that times in our lives where God sends angels, invisible, behind the scenes, answering prayer, working it out, grabbing you by the, the side of the car, push you around a little bit more, grabbing you by the bumper and pulling you back so you don't go over. Listen, y'all, I think we go through too many miraculous moves in our lives, and we just chalk it up to luck. At least that's what they say on TV. Well, you know, I, I, it was just good luck. I, I just had good fortune. No, God was watching over you. Uh, and too many times we don't give God the credit. We think we did something miraculous. Oh, it must be that brand of car that I drive. You know, they're pretty safe. Uh, it must be the airbags that kept me from going through the windows. You know, they're pretty good, but they slap you real hard. Uh, no, it's not good luck or good fortune. It's grace and God moving, God sending servants to do work on his behalf. So if you're going through an impossible situation in your life right now, if you're going through some things in your life and you feel like nobody knows, nobody cares, and I can't get out of it, I'm just going to have to die like this. I serve notice that there are invisible forces behind the scenes working out for your good and for God's glory. Ah, uh, God is a God that keeps promises. If he say he going to do it, he going to do it. In the context that we read this morning, there are two armies warring against each other. One is Israel, God's people. The other is the Aram, Aram and the king on their side. And the king of Aram was plotting against God's people. You need to hear me now. Because there's going to be some times in your life when people are plotting against you. And Priscilla, sometimes people pick on you just because you are a believer in Jesus Christ. You don't even have to do nothing. I don't even like her. Why? I don't know why I don't like her, but I just don't like her. People have told me that. I'm telling you, people have told me that. Uh, you think you all that. You walk around like you own the world, like the hospital belongs to you, like you run things. I said, man, I don't run things, but my heaven does. You can hate if you want to. You can hate if you want to. Favor ain't fair. But in this context, uh, there's a king who's hating on God's king, uh, God's chosen people, and he decides to launch multiple attacks on them. But when we pull back the curtains of life, the curtain of time, we realize there's more than meets the eye. There is an invisible world going on around us even while we're holding church this morning. God operates in the natural and in the supernatural. And don't forget, years ago, he pulled back the curtains and stepped out of eternity and stepped into time. He says, y'all don't scare me. And I'm not limited because I'm God. I can create time, I can create a planet, then I can put myself in it if I want to. I'm so bad that I can put myself, the, the God that's so big the universe can't hold me, and yet I can narrow myself down so I can put myself in a woman's womb, be birthed, live for 33 and a half years, die for the sins of the world, resurrect three days later, Step on a cloud and go back into glory from time back into eternity. That's how bad I am. You better ask around. You think you bad. You think you got something going on. You better ask somebody. You better ask somebody. This God is an invisible God. We can't even see God because we are so polluted. We are so sinful. We are so messed up. We can't see God and live. So God gives us glimpses of himself. 
that his creation is living. Uh, God didn't just create what you can see. God created what you can't see. You can't see the wind, but you know it's there. You can't see the wind, but you see it afloat. You can't see the wind, but you can see when a hurricane or tornado comes, it causes things to sway and to move and to dislodge and move across the field. I tell you, God not only operates in the natural, but in the supernatural. Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or power or, or principalities. All things were created by him and for him. Tell your neighbor, nudge him and tell him, everything you see is for God's glory. The fact that God is spirit means that God doesn't have a human body the way you and I do. But, but he's also a living and a personal being. And as such, he allows us, listen to me, he doesn't have to, but he allows us to have a personal relationship with him. Ah, aren't you glad? You ever been on TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, and, and somebody wants to friend you? They send you a friend request. You have two options. You can accept or you can delete. And they never know. They just say, I thought they were my friend. I, I, I asked for a friend request, and I still ain't heard from her. She ain't trying to get with you. <laughs> then we try to go to the dating apps. Swipe right, swipe left. How come? I thought this was a good match. They went with you. Everybody ain't with you, but aren't you glad? God never deletes us. God never swipes left on us. Everybody, the cute ones and the ugly ones, he said, I accept, I accept the tall and the short. I accept, I accept the rich and the poor. I accept, I accept. He never swipes left on us. You ought to be glad right there. You ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Because it was up to me, I wouldn't accept a few folk. But God loves us that much. He loves us just that much. The fact that God is spirit means that we can't always see him. We can't trace him, but we know he's there. You will know that the living God is among you. Now, now, now comprehend that God is there unlike anything else. He's unlike anything else in all creation. Listen, one theologian said it like this. He says there's only two elements in the universe. Now, you know, if you ever went to school and you were in science, you remember the elementary chart that we had, gold, silver, or all that stuff we supposed to memorize. And if you see these letters, it means this. But I say that's not all that. It's not all that. It's only two. The stuff that you and I know about and the other substance is God. God is the only substance we can't quantify and we can't qualify. It's the uh, usia, U-S-I-A. It's the usia or the substance or the makeup of who he is. And, and we don't know what it is. We can't figure it out. We know that he's, he's, he's spirit. We know that he exists in unapproachable light. We know that he can be everywhere at the same time. We know that he's all-knowing. We know that he's all-powerful. But we can't put that in a beaker. Look under a microscope and trace it and track it and reproduce it. He says, because I'm God. I'm a, he says, I created you, but I'm greater than what you know. I work behind the scenes doing stuff on your behalf. God makes himself known three ways, three ways. Through creation, when you look at the mountains, when you look at the stars, when you look at the sunrise and the sunset, creation demands there is a creator. But he also makes himself known through his word. That's why when, before I preach, I read what he said. Because, see, everything after that is my commentary on it, and it could be faulty. But everything we just read is God's word to you. God says, I reveal myself through my written word. But thirdly, he reveals himself to you and me, even though we can't see him. He reveals himself to us by his incarnate word. Ah, his name is Jesus Christ. So when we saw him, we saw the best. We saw everything that God is in Jesus. And we can't discover who God is on our own. We have to wait for him to tell us who he is. He even has to tell us how to work 
them. That's how awesome he is. In other words, you can't just come in and worship him any old kind of way. You can't just get online and stream him any old kind of way. You can't just show up and decide how you're going to love him, care for him, worship him, give to him. He said, I have to tell you because I'm so awesome. I'm unlike anybody and anything you've ever known. I have to tell you how to get close to me. You know, just to be close to you. You can't get close to him unless he shows you how and tells you how. How did we get to this passage of scripture in 2 Kings chapter 6? I'm going to hear about that on the way home. Uh, uh, chapter 6. The miracle of God's prophet Elijah is what highlights what's going on. Elisha, remember Elisha. There's two characters that sound the same. Elijah with a J. We're not talking about him. We're talking about Elisha with an S. Elisha is the character involved in this text. And he's the one that's able to get secrets from the army across the way trying to come and destroy their people. So the Syrian king is furious because every time he tries to plan to go destroy God's people, you ought to be interested in this because you are God's people. Every time he gets word uh, to his people to go destroy God's people, God foils his plans. And he's hot because he can't figure out how to do it. Somebody's texting. Somebody's giving a word to the, the king in advance and letting them know we're coming. And they keep messing us up. But I serve, notice, no, it's not that. It's the, the Holy Spirit and or angels moving behind the scenes on our behalf. Listen, y'all, you didn't get to church this morning by yourself. You think you woke yourself up. The alarm clock may have gone off, but the alarm clock is still going off on some people who ain't getting up. Listen, the alarm clock woke up, but it was the Lord who touched you with his finger of love and shook your body and woke you up and said, it's time to go to church. It's the Lord to pay on your bottom and your shirt on the top and not the other way around. It's the Lord who provides coffee you had this morning, the pastry or something you may have eaten. It's the Lord who got your car started this morning and got you pointed in the right direction so you have enough sense to drive it to church and not church's chicken. It's the Lord who got you up in here lifting up holy hands saying, great is my God and he's awesome and worthy to be praised. It's the Lord who's got you sitting here contemplating the message right now, trying to understand what God is saying to you this morning. Every move of your life, even your heartbeat, is from God this morning. Somebody give God praise up in here. Help me, Lord. Help me. I'm doing the best I can. I'm doing the best. Listen, there's three things you need to take home with you tonight, today. Three things you need to take home with you today about what's going on in this passage of Scripture. First, number one, notice the Lord's ambush warning. The Lord's ambush warning. In other words, there is somebody trying to ambush you, destroy you, embarrass you, hurt you. It may be in the church, in your family, on your job, in your neighborhood, or it could be a complete stranger. But Satan is always trying to send destruction and damage and hurt to make you feel less than. There's always an ambush in his plan. And just because you beat Satan yesterday, you beat his, his demons yesterday through prayer and fasting and trusting in God, don't mean he gave up. He's coming back again tomorrow because that's what they do. They keep sending ambushes to try to capture you. Uh, whether your, your enemy might be Pornography. Your, your enemy might be overeating. Your enemy might be uh, 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 gossiping or lying or cussing. Whatever it is that you've been trying to get over, he's going to keep sending it to you to either you defeat it or it defeat you. There's an ambush in your future. Uh, we get natural warnings all the time. The, the news come on and there's a tornado warning. Take cover. There's tornadoes in the area. There's traffic warnings. There's stop traffic on Loop 1604 near I-10. There's an accident. Take another route. There's engine light warning. If you see that come on your dash, you're supposed to pull over and stop the vehicle. 
so you don't damage the engine. There's always warnings coming to help you make some decisions. In the work of God's prophet, God's prophet, uh, to give spiritual warnings, it's our job to give you spiritual warnings about something coming. That's why I'm preaching today. I'm God's prophet telling you that. Take, take notice. Get ready. The enemy's coming at you. And we choose either to obey or disobey. But if we obey, it's not our fault, then the blood is not on our head. But if you decide to disobey God and do what you want to do, because we always move towards the comfortable rather than the committed. See, God says, I need you to do this for the church. And you say, well, I know I'm, I'm supposed to do that, but I don't feel like it today, so I'm going to do this. God says, okay, let's see how this works out. You're going to need me before I need you. How's that going to work out? The Syrian king's way of warfare was guerrilla warfare. See, what he does in guerrilla warfare, he don't have a marching army at this time, in this passage. He didn't have a marching army of hundreds or thousands of soldiers all moving forward in line. You can see him coming. You can hear him coming. No, that's not what he did. He did guerrilla warfare where he's hiding in the bushes with his men. They come out and they hit an area of town, ravage it, tear it up, kill people, knocks things out and run back into the bushes and you don't even know they were there. Then they'll send us another small contingent over here. They were doing guerrilla warfare. Oh, they saw. Ah, but God's man in Israel heard about what they were doing over there and messed it up for them. Uh, uh, listen, y'all, whatever Satan is trying to throw at you in guerrilla warfare, uh, it ain't going to work. Uh, COVID couldn't do it. Uh, job layoffs couldn't do it. Political conspiracies couldn't do it. Uh, 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 even the death of a loved one or a friend or neighbor can't do it uh, because God is in charge. See, God has got it fixed up so no matter what happens, uh, the enemy may come, but he can't steal your faith. He can't take your joy. He can't help the love that he got. He can't take your faith. God's got you. Psalm 56, 9 says, The very moment I call to you for a father's help, the tide of the battle turns. Ah, tell your neighbor, neighbor, get ready, get ready for the tide to turn. The tide's getting ready to turn and my enemies flee. He says this, and the one thing I know, God is on my side. Ah! You can take that to the bank. God is on my side. That's Psalm 56, 9. Listen, don't y'all be scared. Don't you be scared. Pray. Pray because God's listening. He's invisible, but he's there. He's got angels, and they're there. Pray. God wants to hear from you. The tide's about to turn. Ah! Every time the king of Aram, Ben Adad, Ben Hadad, that's his name, Ben Hadad. He, every time he planned to attack Israel, every time he planned to attack God's children, there was a supernatural warning. And in this scenario, it, it kept repeating itself so many times. He's getting ready to attack again. And when, when he gets there, Israel's troops are there now. And they're saying, not today, buddy. And they defeat them and send them running. So they plot again. And the king of Aram is pulling in his top guys. He's pulling them into the Oval Office, if you will. And he's giving them top secret information. We're about to go to war. We're not going to put it out right now. Don't tell CNN. Don't tell Fox. Don't let it be known because it's going to be a clandestine mission. mission. We're going to attack at night. And we're going to go in and we're going to ravage them and we're going to beat them. And so now they launch another attack. And they're ready to take out a town. But when they get there, God's people are there too. And they beat them down and send them running. And the king wants to know, who's talking? There's a spy amongst us. There's a conspiracy to take me down. Who's talking? Who's messing around with me? Who's, who's telling? Somebody is spilling the beans. Somebody is spilling the beans. Listen, he said, there's somebody in the room. Who is it? Listen, y'all, legal issues, you don't talk about. Those medical issues, 
that keep you from enjoying your best or trying to wear you down, hurt your spirit, tear you down. And when the moments, those moments when we don't understand the plot lines and the twists that's going on in your life, in our lives, you need to know that no matter what seems to be going on around you that you can see, God is working behind the scenes. He's got forces behind the scenes to take care of you. Secondly, secondly, the Lord confuses the enemy. Ah, aren't you glad? You thought you were confused. Lord, why me? Why do I have to have diabetes? Why do I have cancer? Why do I have on and on and on? Why is my life like this? Why is my marriage like this? Why are my children like this? Why is my life falling apart? God said, stop all that. That's the enemy. Because I have blessed you with an everlasting, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I love you and I'm taking care of you. Notice it's the treachery. The Syrian king found himself unexpectedly confronted with armed Israeli forces. He suspected treachery amongst his own people. Now he can't even get, he can't even sleep. Because he's looking, can you imagine sleeping with one eye open and seeing if somebody's coming to stab you in the back? Listen, God knows everything. That's why he's omniscient. He's omnipotent, all-powerful, and he's omnipresent. He's present everywhere. So God is right there in their camp. They too stupid to know that God is everywhere. And if God is everywhere, he knows exactly what you're saying when he said, listen, that ought to encourage you and discourage you at the same time. The encouragement is when you're going through some difficult times, God is there for you. He's right there. But also when you're doing something you ain't supposed to be doing, he's right there. I told y'all that a long time ago. Sister Barbara, one of my Sunday school teachers messed me up a long time ago when I was just a kid, just a kid, just a kid. I must have been about 10 years old. And I remember the Sunday school teacher saying, even when your mom and daddy don't know, God knows. And that stuck in my head all my life. And in my young adult life, in my college years, I, I was at places and I was doing some things. And I remember that I said, I got to go home because I can't have no more fun. I ain't having no fun here. God is right there. God is right. He knows everything. And we're foolish to think that we can hide anything from God. He knows our secret thoughts, the places we go. But look at the two moves in this passage right here. Verse 11, there's anger over lack of control. There's anger because the king who is warring against Israel, he don't have any control. He's trying to figure out why his schemes are not working. So there is anger over lack of control. Ah, contrary to verse number 12, there is an awareness of God's invisible control. There is an awareness of God's invisible control. In other words, God is moving, fixing things, sabotaging things against the enemy on our behalf. Why? Because we are his children, and God loves us. God knows when people are trying to mess with you. Have you ever gotten promoted when other people were being fired? True story. Uh, my brother-in-law uh, was working for this company in, in Dallas, and, and he told me and Linda the story about how people were being called in. And the person who got called in walked out with his pink letter saying, thank you for your service, we don't need you no more. Next person, thank you for your service, we don't need you no more. And finally they called his name, he said, well, you know, this is it. I was planning on it, everybody said that was going on right now. So he walks in, they give him a promotion. You don't hear me. God is watching over his children. He's watching over his children. Ah, uh, one, of his, one of his servants said, uh, he says, my Lord, my king, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, another town, another, another country, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. That's how bad God is. In other words, if you thought that you could take somebody and pull them to the side and whisper in their ears, and you take them away from the Oval Office to another part of the White House where ain't nobody there, you think, and you tell them quietly, now this is just between me and you. God says, and me. God knows when somebody's trying to mess over his children. You don't hear me. Whenever we are facing impossible situations, know that God is operating behind the scenes. Jesus 
put emphasis on the Holy Spirit. We don't talk enough about the Holy Spirit, but there's a trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is moving on our behalf. He actually told his disciples, it's better for me that I leave individually. Me, Jesus Christ, it's better that I leave because when I leave, because I have allowed myself to be in one place at a time like human beings, but when I leave, I'm going to send my spirit and he's going to be with everybody in every part of the world at the same time. So he's over in Egypt while he's in Japan. He's in Mexico while he's in the United States. You don't have to worry about calling and saying, well, when he gets back over here. He said, no, he's right there too. So he sends the Holy Spirit who is an expression of Jesus incarnate. Uh, notice that at the back of the room, one of the servants, uh, can you imagine you're the king? And you're mad at everybody in the room because you don't know which one it is. Is it, is it you? 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 And can you imagine one of the little boys in the back, one of the young men in the back, according to this story, kind of, uh, uh, excuse me, King? 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 What is it? Um, I heard that there's a prophet in Israel, God's prophet, and, and he healed Naaman, who took seven dips, and he healed his body. I, Naaman, he said, his name is Elisha, and he, he's the one. He's got, it's got to be him. It's got to be him. If he got that kind of power, yeah. it's got to be him. We, we heard about Naaman going down there. Remember one of your generals, Naaman? He went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan River. He didn't want to do it, but he did it, and he came up healed of leprosy. Yeah, it's Elisha. Elisha, that's his name? Yeah. Where, where is he? He's in Dothan. Dothan, the city of Dothan. Go down to Dothan. Thank you, boy. Go down to Dothan. Because we're going to go and we're going to take care of this fella. We're going to go, and I'm not saying we're going to hurt him. I'm just saying we need to have a talk. He's a person of interest to the king. We need to go have a talk with this young man. Uh, this is the work of God's spirit, working through God's prophet Elisha that we can't see. 1 Timothy 1.17 says, Now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. In other words, He's sending him. He's dispatching his people. Take care of a situation where there's an invisible God who knows everything that they're doing. The verse, the, this verse affirms that God has no visible form because God is spirit. God is spirit. And, and God is, re reveals everything that you and I need to know about him. Listen, do you ever have, have a conversation with your spouse or your children or your family? And, 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 and let them in on how you feel about things. And you say, listen, I'm, I'm a little stressed right now because we have a little shortage. We have a shortage on our finances. We're short. Uh, I'm not sure about the school for the kids. I hear there's bullying going on. I hear there's guns going on. I'm a little concerned. We all take some worries. We all have some stresses. We all have some frustrations. But listen, church, the Lord Jesus is our supernatural provider. Uh, uh, and he can provide above and beyond anything we can ask or even imagine. Uh, 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 every good and perfect work comes from the Father of lights from above. So it's supernatural, which means we can't explain it, we can't trace it, we can't outline it, we really can't teach it right because we're not still not sure how God does what he does. But that's what makes him God. The supernatural can be described in Ephesians 3.20 that says... And he will do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can ask or even imagine. In other words, God can take your bad day and turn it into a celebration. He can take your faults and your failures and turn it into a fiesta. God is ready to bless you real good. You need to hear me. So he sent horses and chariots. Horses and chariots. Now, in those days, in, 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 in that country, horses and chariots represented the best that they had. It was the Humvee of the day, if you will. America's got these Humvees that we sit in about, and they had horses and chariots. And when they come, they're some bad dudes. But not only that, they sent a ton of soldiers. They sent a lot of them, so much that when they got there, they surrounded the whole city. That's how many they sent to get one man. What are y'all scared of? What's wrong with y'all? Don't it sound a little bit like in the, in the garden when Jesus is praying and they sent a whole army to go get Jesus? What you scared of? And then they had the nerve in the garden to ask Jesus, 
are you Jesus? And he says, I am. And the whole army falls back to the ground. Brother Al, I don't know about you. Aren't you glad God worked on behalf of us? I don't know about you, Brother Al, but if I had been there and Jesus says, I am, and we all fall down, I would have left. If they had 10,000 people, it would have been 9,999 minus Russell. If anybody's bad enough to knock down all the soldiers, he's God. Ah, so he, he goes and, and, and there's horses all around and chariots, chariots, and, and they came by night. Why y'all coming by night? What y'all scared of? One little preacher telling you about yourself. Letting God use him to warn God's people to be on alert because God has got your back. Don't worry about what looks like impossible. God's got your back. I heard the diagnosis about your, about your jaw. Don't worry about it. God's got your back. I heard the situation in your family. God's got your back. I heard your finances look funny since COVID. God's got your back. What y'all scared of? Why are you sending a whole army at night? What y'all scared of? One little preacher. What y'all scared of? What you scared of? What you scared of? Ah, God is moving supernaturally through the Holy Spirit. But he also got some angels. Angels don't mess around, y'all. Angels are real. God made them in the beginning when he created the heavens and the earth. We know that there are angels. Zachariah saw angels in his book. Zachariah saw horses of a different color in Zechariah chapter 1. Ezekiel saw living creatures described as having the appearance of burning coals in chapter 1 verse 13. God's power is on display through his angels. Ah! It's on display through his angels. Uh, Warren Wiersbe in his book says the logical solution for the king of Aram was to eliminate Elisha. In other words, if he's the one doing the blabbing, bumping his gums, talking too much, and telling all the secrets, then the logical conclusion is that's the one we need to take out. You better think again. Anytime you try to take out one of God's servants doing God's will, God's way, messing up your day, you better watch out. Because you're not fighting against Elisha, you fight against the Lord. You're not fighting against the king of Israel, you fight against the Lord. You're not fighting against the people in this room, you fight against the Lord. These are God's children made in his image to glorify him, to worship him, to give testimony of his loving. God is able, I tell you. God is able. You better watch out who you mess with. You better ask around what happens when you mess with God's people. You better ask around. You better ask around. Ah! 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 God ruined the ambush against Israel. Listen, God confuses Satan's attacks against you and against me. He confuses Satan's attack against our relationships. God confuses Satan's attacks on our medical condition. God uh, uh, confuses Satan's attack on our job. Uh, uh, God knows that there's an ambush, but God also sends and lets us know he has an invisible force behind the scenes working for you and working for me. Somebody say amen right there. Ah, we're almost done here. Is it hot up here or is it just me? The Lord's ambush and warning Two, the Lord confuses the enemy. Lastly, lastly, if you keep a note, the Lord opens blinded eyes. Tell your neighbor sitting next to your neighbor, 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 God opens blinded eyes. That means God is not opening just the natural eye. He's hope opening your spiritual eyes. See, you and I can see from here to there. But we can't understand how God's going to take us from here to there. You hear what I'm saying? You, 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 you know how things are working in your life situation, and you can't figure that out. You can't even figure you out. And so God says, I am able to open your spiritual eyes that you may understand what's going on. Listen, the supernatural world is greater than what you can see. 
One sermon, one preacher said it in a sermon like this years ago. I can't remember who said it. He said, but I imagine, I imagine, I imagine, I imagine that if we could see what's going on around us just in this room, we wouldn't be able to sleep at night because there's always demonic attacks and there's always angelic hosts fighting for you and for me. Somebody hear me right now. Every, throughout scripture, we see God dispatching angels and the angels are some tough creatures. As a matter of fact, they're so bad. They're so tough. Michael put Satan out of heaven. So Michael bad. You think Satan is bad and he's powerful? He is. And don't mess with him. But he's, he's, he's so bad, he thought he was. God says, Michael, go handle my light work. And Michael put Satan out. So Michael bad too. There's only three named angels that we know of, Lucifer, Michael, and Gabriel. We're going to hear from Gabriel later when he blows the horn and decides and lets us know Jesus is back. Then we'll all hear from Gabriel at the same time, and we'll all be raptured up into the glory. Amen? But until then, know that there are angels around you. There are angels in your car. There are angels in your bedroom. There are angels in your job situation. There are angels in your life. When you think you're all alone, when you're having a bad day, when you're having a lonely day, when you're having a depressing day, you need to tell yourself, self, God's got angels all around me. I don't have to worry. I don't have to fear. God got this. Not only does the Holy Spirit dwell in me, but the angels are around me. I'm having a pretty good day right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I needed to know that. I needed to know that. Listen, y'all, let me say this. Let me say this. When the church looks weak, that's when they're the strongest. Listen, uh, Skybridge, I just talked to the leaders. I had a, a leadership meeting on Thursday, and I reminded the leaders that there's a story about a, 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 a judge in, in the Old Testament by the Gideon. And Gideon was about to go to war on God's behalf with 32,000 men. 32,000. God said, uh-uh, there's too many. Because if you win the war, you're going to think it was you and your 32,000. There are too many. Send some home. So basically what he really asks is, anybody chicken? And he says, if you chicken, go home. 10,000 left. That left 22,000. Then he said, all right, this is what we're going to do. Y'all kneel down and drink water. And anybody else who drink water and lap up like a dog, stay. Everybody else, leave. He lost another group of people so that he lost 9,000. Uh, he lost the 22,000. He had 10,000. And so he lost 9,700. So here he is. It don't look right. It don't look fair. Matter of fact, it looks quite depressing to a ministry leader to lose most of the people in your ministry, to a pastor who loses most of the members in the church. But he's down from 32,000 to 300. He says, now go to battle. No, don't, 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 don't miss it. He said, because... When you work with the 300, <laughs> when, when you win, ah, he just told you you're about to win. Church, we have dwindled the numbers here at Skybridge. After COVID, at churches all around the world and around the country, people have dropped off going to church. They just quit. They gave up on God. And God said, Russell, you go back and tell the people at Skybridge, take your 300. And when you win with the 300, you will know it was from me. You will know it was from me. You didn't do it. You ain't got enough strength. You ain't got enough people. You don't have enough chariots. You don't have enough horses. You don't have enough brain power. You don't have enough will. You don't have enough activity. You ain't making enough money. When you win, it's going to be because of me. Because there's me walking behind the scenes, fixing it for you, for your good, and for my glory. Somebody ought to shout right there. Somebody ought to shout. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Removing the fears of his servant. So there they are. They're at Dothan. And at Dothan, the sun comes up. Elisha, the mighty prophet of God, is telling the enemy's mess on the other side of the country. The sun comes up, and Elisha has a servant by the name, well, we don't know his name, but he walks out the door, he opens, and he walks out, and goes like, oh. Fix 
Then he goes back in and he tells them, we're surrounded. We're surrounded. What, what are we going to do? He said, what do you mean? He said, there are horses and chariots all around. They're right up to the door. I mean, when I open the door, there they are. Elisha, servant, prays. Lord, open this boy's eyes so he can see what I see. And the text goes on to tell us when he prayed, God opened his servant's spiritual eyes. And he said, now take another look. I'm paraphrasing. Go take a look again. See, you look too quick. <laughs> Listen, let me tell y'all, we look too quick. Yeah. We look too fast. We look maybe with our readers. Maybe we look with our natural eyes. But he said, now go back out and look. And when his servant went back outside, not only were the people still there, but behind them, all the way up on the mountains, God had angels yeah. with horses and chariots of fire. The fire represents the Holy Spirit. It represents power. It represents God's presence. It represents that when they move, we move just like that. When they try to take you out, we'll take them out. When they try to hurt you, we'll hurt them. When they try to stop your agenda, we'll stop theirs because God's got you. The enemy is surrounded by an angelic host ready to take them out. You just look too quick. You're looking with your natural eyes. What's bothering you today? Go back and look again because God's got angels fighting for you, fighting with you. We're reminded that the winds and the waves obey God. Devils and demons fall down when God comes around. What is your problem compared to that? God's got you. God, he exposed their plan. God is invisible. His throne is invisible. His angels and his glory are hidden out of our view. But when necessary, he makes them come into view so that we can know that we're not alone. God's got us. But in order to appreciate that, you got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You can't let stuff scare you got here this morning and I come in and there was a three or four people in the building. I started flipping switches because I'm trying to figure out to myself why is it that Mike and Michelle ain't turning on no lights? Why is it that Paul and Janet walking around here looking I'm just like what's wrong with y'all? So I'm turning on lights. Ain't no power in the hallway. It's dark in the hallway so I go down to the other end. I said well I'll go down to the fellowship hall. Only half the room got AC. I'm over there pushing buttons, trying to get stuff going. The other side was black. It was black. Paul and Celeste came down and they said, Pastor, the microphones are out. The keyboard is out. Everything is out. There's no power. The lights over the pew are out. What are we going to do? And I said, uh-huh. Lester came in to pray with me. You notice? Nothing happens until you pray. Celeste was getting ready to walk out. And he and I pray, whoever comes back there to pray, me and Paul, me and, me and Celeste, it was Celeste this morning. I said, wait, let's pray. And I said, you know, we're going to have to have old school. You know what old school is. And he looked at me, I said, man, that's when we go in there and raise up the witness. He said, that's what I'm going to do, Pastor. I'm going to go raise the witness. I said, and we're going to have better church this morning because of that. <laughs> See, y'all don't know nothing about old school when you have to take your coat off because you're sweating like a pig. And you, gotta go, and you sing better, too, because you ain't trying to be cute. You ain't trying to be air conditioned. You're trying to finish so you can go eat and get some water. But we're going to have a good old time. And he's an on time God. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. See, the enemy thought he was knocking us off our course, messing up our worship, hurting our praise. But I still remember my Bible said, my Bible said, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Do I have a worshiper in the house? I just need two or three people on this side to stand up and say, I don't mind saying, I enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Two or three on this side who don't mind standing and saying, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, with or without electricity, I'm going to give him praise. I'm going to give him glory because it was never about me <laughs> anyway. It was all about knowing him in a greater way. 
God is able. God is moving in the background, taking care of us, working things out for us. See, if we had worship in our regular way, we'd do our regular moves, our regular stuff, and go back to our regular house. But this time, we're going back with power, with purpose, with joy, knowing that God is able to do more than we can ask, more than we can conceive. God loves us with AC, loves us without AC, realizing that we can have church without it, but we can't have it without him. High five two people and say, God, it's all about God. God opened their eyes that they may see. Ah! Colossians 1, 6, I'll be done with this. He says, for by him, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. So everything moves on God's command because God made everything, every rock, every tree, every fish, every bird, every giraffe, every platypus, every goat, every human being was made through him and for him. It's made for his glory. So you ain't gonna mess up what he made. You ain't gonna mess up. You can try all you want. He will either teach you differently or take you out trying. He ain't scared of you. We look at God and we learn these things. He knows all things and possesses all wisdom. He has unlimited power to deal with our biggest problems. And we can depend on him to protect us until we are called home. How do we know? Because there are invisible forces being in the scenes all around us to bring him glory and to bring us peace. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah.